Welcome back everybody. Sorry for being such a slug and not doing the videos. Because <laughs> I haven't done the car. <laughs> uh, you know, after that, you know, get adjoining the cars, you know, it's great, but it was major burnout on the cars. And then it started to get cold and I had to start worrying about winter and getting everything squared away for winter, then I can get back on this, which I did. Another thing was my welder was really screwing up and it was welding, it was fusing one side of the metal and it looked like it fused the other side, but it wasn't. It was really odd. So what did I do? Replace the gun, didn't work. Replace the potentiometer, didn't work. Clean, clean and check, check, uh, tested the diodes, didn't work. Screw it, bought another welder. And I waited two weeks for the welding shop to send me, to give me the welder, but Hobart never shipped it to them. So I just went down and bought one. You know, the same thing I was buying, but I needed it right then and there to do an exhaust and a whole bunch of other stuff. But that's beside the point. Now, what I am going to do is let's build a rotisserie. Um, I, I'll show you what I, uh, I'm going to use for the rotisserie. And I'll show you what car I'm going to put on it because I don't want to put this thing on the thing rotisserie first because if the rotisserie fails, <laughs> I don't want this thing to be crashing on the ground. That would stink, you know? I got another car over here that I'm going to put it on there, which, you know, it's, it's not, it's, a, it's less weight, but I don't care. You know, if this thing crashes to the ground, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, but let's go over to the table and show you what I got. These are the parts we're going to use for the rotisserie. Two engine stands. One I got for free. One I got for ten dollars, both from yard sales. People have them. They, you know, they have the best intentions, and then they just sit around, sit around, and someone just says, "Get them out of my sight." Well, I got them out of their sight. We also got this. Another get them out of my sight is the weight rack that I use that I set up with casters. The casters I paid, I think it was like eight or nine dollars a piece for from Surplus Center. And you know, this was free of course. To use to put the rear half of the um, Spark Quattro on. Would I do that again? No, just use a dolly on the chassis and hang it from the, hang it from the rafters. It'll give you a much better um, height differential or much better way to adjust the height onto the car. That's, this was kind of limited. I, I barely did it, but you know, hindsight's 2020. Doesn't really matter. So let's pull this apart, and then we can start welding these onto this and making this into a rotisserie. Seeing how it has wheels, I can move the body around. Blah blah blah, all this stuff. And there's, you know, there's also hopefully I'm going to use the rest of the parts up on this thing uh, to, you know, when I completely pull it apart, it hopefully will give me enough steel to use it, you know, to do the entire thing. Ah. Oh. Enough me, see, I'm not used to the videos. So I gotta start keep doing this. <laughs> let's, let's, let me start taking this apart. Here we have the two main crossbars for the rotisserie with the casters on them. Here we have the two engine stands. What I have is a piece of pipe in between here, trying to keep these things absolutely equal. So when you do have it on there, it'll be just like a bearing. You want as much contact as you can on the surface that it wants to be contacted on. So instead of having just a little bit of contact on here, where the grease is just pressing out, it'll have full contact here where you have grease in here, it'll try and slide a little bit easier. I hope you're right. I, I mean, I'm trying to be in, you know, as, as theoretically good as possible. I also have to have the center in between these two. And when I have that centered, then I'm going to build off the post from these, put it right onto here. That way it stabilizes and disperses the energy over the entire bar. Let's uh, grab the grinder. I'm going to clean this up, then um, clean up the edges so I can weld it, make it equidistant, in, you know, so as I'm exactly in the center, then make sure this section down here is the same width of this section here so I can try to make everything as equal as possible. By the time I put it up there, it's not going to be equal as in, you know, deviations of some sort, but I'm, I'm going to at least try and start out <laughs> to be as equal as possible just so as I have some hope of this thing just nicely turning around. I mean, I did it on my other one. Uh, it worked out pretty well. So let me just uh, um, grab the grinder and we'll clean this up.
before we start welding this thing up, I have the, the um, two bottom pieces pretty much parallel. I use the framing squares, that's all set. What I am going to do is I have to make sure this distance right here is the same as this distance, so it's as close as we can get. What I did do is I went out to the scrap pile I found. This is an old drag link from a uh, backhoe that I broke <laughs> and had to fix. And what I'm going to do here is put this in here to make it pretty much equal, just like that. And we got our handy dandy Harbor Freight clamp here. I'm trying to keep everything as equal as possible with this tube through here. I mean, you know, do we have numerous amounts of uh, variability? You know, when we put this thing on? Yeah, but I'm just trying to get it as close as I can. This way, where this is sitting up, this is going to be straight up. This is going to make our job easier when we actually attach it to a car like this car or that car. But that's uh, beside the point at this, you know, it's beside the point. So let me go grab my welding helmet. I can gonna give this thing four really decent tacks. And then I'm gonna take the rest of that thing apart and cut it up that for other supports. And I'm gonna show you the reason why. So let's, uh, let's get on along with it. Now that this is tacked on, it's, really, it's not going anywhere, and now that we have this squared away. One place where I think there might be failure in this uh, rotisserie is the, the wall size or the thickness of this tubing is not that great. So what I gotta do is do exactly what they do on bridges. You're putting a truss in it. So I'm going to have like a 45 degree angle from here up to here. So that actually disperses the load when, when the car is sitting right here. Instead of having all the load transferred to this one small uh, six inch section in the center where it could possibly buckle over here, I am gonna make a, um, take a piece of uh, square tubing, put it right here in the center or as close as I can or pretty much. So what it's doing is dispersing the load. So I have a load here then I don't have a load or it's load bearing for about a foot probably, maybe a little over, and then it stops. So this other part is bearing it. So it's actually making a structure. I'm also gonna do a little bit on the bottom um, for another point where it's, it's going to go down. Another triangular structure on the bottom off of this and off of the back. Uh, <laughs> bear with me, but this is just a quick little thing to show you that um, if this wall tubing, if the wall tubing that you're going to use for your rotisserie is not going to be thick enough, well, you got to build in structure. How do you build it in? Well, you, you, you basically make braces for it. So making, this is all the load here, then braces off of here. It'll transfer over here, transfer over here. So if this thing tries to buckle, it'll, it'll usually buckle in, in the furthest point in the right in the middle. That's where most of the stress is. So that's where I'm going to try and isolate that stress. So let me go take apart this and we can get uh, that metal all cut up and make it work. What I did was I put the center of, or basically the uh, uh, center of this bar right there, and I ran a 45 degree. I'm gonna just gonna take my portable bandsaw and zap it down. Then we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put it on here, and we'll figure out the angles.
Okay, we now have the rotisserie in, in its basic form right here. We're also going to build in, on the bottom we have to do two things, but the first thing is we have to have a safety mechanism in case this tube collapses. After looking at it, I don't think it will, but you always have to sit there and go, all right, well, what, what if something happens and it does collapse? Well, what I want to do is, this is the reason why I have these things opposed. Right now, these wheels, if I put it like this, that is the height, oh, the grease, that is the height of how far it's gonna be above the floor. Now, what I wanna do is, these are the supports that I took off of the rest of the uh, weight rack. What I did is I bent a couple up and drilled a couple of holes. What it is is this, these are the wheels from the engine stand. I'm gonna have it like this, I hope you can see it, but it's going to be a wheel right here, just in case this thing collapses, I should collapse onto the wheel. And that way I can move the thing around and safely get the car. That is the most, that is the, that is the major thing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut these pins off. I'm gonna weld them to this and, and then I'm gonna cut a section of this box section and put it in between here for even more support. And it's gonna be a little bit more than that. Um, this box section onto here is for the second thing we have to do on the bottom of the rotisserie. So let me get the let me get that cutter. I'll start cutting this stuff up, and we'll make this thing uh, <laughs> at least somewhat safe. Yeah, they're just loose enough so I can move them around a little bit. My main goal now is to get them onto this position or onto the uh, uh, crossbars, but I have to first cut this to fit in between here because I want another part of this is going to be, this is a stabilizer uh, for the actual rotisserie. I'll show you what it is in just a second, but first I want to cut this so I'll have enough uh, uh, area here so I can weld onto it. So um, let me just mark it out. Let me get the welder. I'm going to weld these things on so they're in the center of these posts and then we're going to get on with doing the section where uh, hopefully it'll make sure the bottom part of the uh, rotisserie won't kick out. So let me just grab the welder and uh, blast that off. That's pretty tacked in right now. Um, not going anywhere. Roughly the same height. Um, I have plenty of distance anyway. Now we have to put a. Uh, oh, I'll show you what I got to do here in just a second. Let me uh, go grab the pipe and come back and show you how to hold these things together at the bottom. Here we are at the uh, point where the rotisserie is basically tacked together, the main structure of it. Now what we got to do is we have this. You know, this is our safety, safety wheels. Second. It actually creates a little bit more of a triangulation cross brace to keep this tube stable so it doesn't collapse. Third, on the rotisserie, we are basically, it's just like an engine stand. This is what the engines are attached to. This is the yoke, that's what I would call it. 
and the engine it bolts to this. And this weld right here is designed to take 750 pounds, which is great. And along with that collar down there, the receiving collar. Now, generally, and that's two of them, so that's 1,500 pounds. The shell body shells, generally 400 pounds, you know, roughly. I'm just throwing this out there. I have no idea. I've never weighed one. You know, it's, uh, that's what I'm just guessing, but they're all different. Every single one is different, you know. You put a beetle on one or, or whatever. Now, let's get back to this. The top part, yes, I got a lot of tubing there to prevent these two wheels from kicking out. What it is, is you have the top part, you have down here, and if these are, um, if, the, if, if you have wheels on it, it wants to kick out or kick in and then bend the body shell because, you know, force wants to go down. What I'm trying to do is make a box. Basically, that top, here's, you know, this top right here, and the body shell is one uh, length of a box. The two sides are two lengths of the box. Well, I got to complete the box on the bottom. What am I going to use? I have this. These, there was two of these that were on the weight rack. I'm going to cut all the tabs, bring them down, weld them to here. Now, what I'm going to do is they're going to be on the bottom of this. How are we going to attach it? This is what they use to attach it. I got to do it like this and bring it down. But I also have to have this down so the bolt goes through this square tubing. That is a big thing because it gives me more meat of steel, you know, more, um, more steel to actually prevent the kick out. It, and that's a pretty big thing for me. And I'm going to cut this side because I got two of these for both sides. I'm going to cut them off, weld them onto here. Then when these things are together, I'm going to weld the top. It's going to, I'm trying to form basically steel plywood. You know, because plywood is sheets of, um, of uh, wood put together with glue. But my glue is going to be a welding. You know, it's going to be MIG wire. Let's first, uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to cut those off. I'm going to cut these up and some grinds off some of this metal. So we can actually put this in there and see exactly, actually it's going to be on the other side over here because that's where I want everything to be. So let's, uh, let's leap into action. Probably wondering why I wear the mask. The paint on this stuff smells like that. Typical Chinese paint. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is line it straight up and down with this. So it's going to be straight and it's going to be pretty much uh, flat as in, you know, uh, a trajectory. I mean, you do have some up and down. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to be that bad. It doesn't have to be really exact, but I'm trying to get it as close as I can pretty much get it. And I'm going to have the height from here to here and there to there all set up and along in a straight line. Should be pretty close, you know. We're not doing rocket science here. So let me go grab my welder. I'm going to give it a tack. And actually, I'm going to first measure it, then I'll give it a tack and uh, get this thing done. Base is done for the rotisserie. Let's see if we can stick on the 914. If it works on that, we're putting this four block on the lift and getting it ready for it. So let me uh, let's uh, build the mounting system for the 914 and let's get this thing done. Handy dandy recycling. Now the Subaru front bumper support. This was given to me when I bought a bunch of parts. You know, this guy said, "Hey, you want it?" I said, "Sure." You know, so um, I figured this is the best because the width. The biggest thing is the width, and it's a very nice structural piece. I can probably weld on the mounts and bolt it right to the 914. First thing, I'll just cut this up and uh, get right on. Because I was going to use these mounts anyway 
on this side, these mounts for the 22B project are pretty decent. And I wasn't going to use these center set or uh, these uh, uh, box sections anyway. So let me uh, cut this out and trim it out. We'll figure out how to put that on. It's probably just going to be a wedge plate with a piece of steel, something like that. Gonna figure that out. But um, let me just uh, start cutting this thing up. We now have the point where we have to make this bar as the actual carrier bar for the uh, rotisserie to put on that car. So we're trying to make everything equal. Just trying to, you know, we want to give us the best chance of it to easily spin and, and so forth. And that's, usually when you make everything equal, it's either going to be equally bad or equally good. So I'm attempting to make it equally good. Um, okay, basically what I want to do is measure this. And what I have... What do we have here? Um, 54 and 3 quarters. So 54 and 3 quarters is 27 and 3 eighths. Grab my pen here. 27 and 3 eighths. And funny thing is, it lines up with this hole. Okay, there we go. What we got to do here, and next is we have to pretty much center this. So that is, you know, I have the mark down there. This is pretty much centered. Would you expect it to go here? Well, we can't do it there. We have to take, in order to create like a center of gravity type situation, we are going to make this like this because we have the ears going down. And I want to have it, that's the center there. And if I look straight down, this bar is equal all the way. So, I gotta, Grind it here, grind it there, grind it there, and grind it here. <laughs> That's why I have the mask. I'm going to grind this stuff. Let me grind this up. I'll wind it up, and that way we can start making the mounts on the, the 914. mother could pull out. <laughs> All right, let me get the other stuff. That's, that's welded in. That's welded in. Let me build the plates for those so we can get this thing together and test that to make sure it all works. Now that we're on to the mounts for the chassis, it's going to be the same thing for the Sport Quattro on this 914. What I'm going to use is basically this was the mount for the engine on the engine stands. Plenty of metal. It won't pull through. What I'm going to do on this, I was going to use a second one if there was no panel in between and just plate it. That's what I'm going to do on that. On this, there is a, uh, a floor panel right here and it goes in between. So I'm just going to use some big washers. The only thing I'm going to do, let me just pull it apart, is put this on like that. Mark the hole. We'll cut it, grind it, and weld up some plates. And stick it on. See what happens. And then we can all, then we can figure out exactly where to stick it on <laughs> Because I gotta measure the height and the width and make sure it's gonna fit too. Um, let me go throw this in the drill press. And, well, let me mark it. Then I'll throw it in the drill press and then we'll just get this done. Now we're at the point of trying to figure out the center part of the car. We gotta do it on that one too. Uh, cheat notes. What I did, we have to figure out, you know, the width of the car 
is is pretty simple to figure out. It's the base of the car is what we have to do. And right now it's on a dolly, it's pretty much level. It's as level as the garage floor is gonna get. Now what I did is I put a level in here on the very top of the car and brought it all the way out here. So this height is the same thing as this height. And if I take a look, what do we have? We have 52 and a half inches from the height from the garage floor to the top. When we take this measurement, this is from the, the uh, top of the floor of the floorboards to the top of this, which is 40 and three quarters of an inch. Uh, three quarter, 40 and three quarters of an inch. I'm also going to add three quarters of an inch for underneath. You know, that's a speculation. That's, you know, an artistic measure <laughs> that I'm going to use. And just to give me a rough estimate of what it's going to be. So what do we got? Well, we now have 41 and a half inches just to make it easy in between the 52 and a half and the 41 and a half. So we have 11 inches. This thing is 11 inches above the ground. What we have to do now is figure out, you know, because we have the 40 and uh, 41 and a half to the base of the floor. Cut in half, 20 and three quarters. Add that to 11, 31 and three quarters. So that's where our bar is gonna have to be. That'll be in the midpoint of this car. Whether or not it will work, eh, who knows. So let's try and, you know, let's bolt the uh, uh, plates on there and let's get this thing up because we're doing the same exact thing with the Sport Quattro when I do that. So this is, I'm not gonna explain what I do with that. I'm just explaining here. So this will be over with. And then when you see that thing on the rotisserie, it's just be on the rotisserie. So um, let's, uh, let me go grab some more steel and let's figure out how to do this. Now we're at the back of the car. We're gonna start here uh, and then I'm gonna put the front on. What it is, is we have the center line of the car. It's not the center of gravity, the center line of the car. So we have equidistant top, you know, to the bottom, in between, so when we turn it, basically this side and this side will be equal so we know exactly and make sure it has ground clearance um, from the rotisserie. Now, what we want to do is give an estimation on the center of gravity. The center of gravity is in effect, you know, an equal weight and balance type issue. This thing, you might have a lot more surface area up here, but there's a lot more steel down here, so you're trying to counteract it. You know what? I can't really do that with what I have. I probably could, but I'm not that smart to figure it out, so I'm going to estimate it. I'm going to try and get it underneath this belt line right here, just so I can say, all right, well, it's probably the easiest, easiest way to attach it, and also most of the weight is pretty much from here straight through. If I can do it right there, then the, the sheet metal up top um, will counteract the suspension and the, and the frame rails and all that stuff underneath. Hopefully it'll turn nice. I mean, it's speculation on my part, you know, it's what you're going to do and you're just guessing at this point, but it's trying to be a, kind of a logical, you know, a logical guess. Also, it's kind of interesting when you talk about, you know, trying to get the center of gravity down, especially when you're taking a look at um, the center line of the car. Now, what I'm doing is, if I bring this yoke down here and put it here, if this is, let's say, 21 inches, and I bring it down 8 inches, what do I need for this top to swing all the way through? Well, the very top of that, I need 28, or what was it? Yeah, 28 inches, basically, or 29 inches. that I need at the bottom, when this thing is all the way up on its back, there's 29 inches on the bottom, and you know, that much less on the top was 10 inches or, uh, yeah, uh, 12 inches on the top. So that's, you know, that's kind of what we're, we're looking at. And we're, we also have to figure out, we have to also go from the center, which this is the center right here. It's really nice that they gave us that because I, in between the two, two uh, tail lights is exactly 31 inches. There's 15 and a half inches and there's a center line because I already measured it from the ground. What it is, I also have to measure all the way up to where the, the farthest point of the fender to make sure that width will actually clear as it rotates around with the rotisserie. Before we do anything, putting it on the rotisserie, we have to make sure, at least we kind of calculate that it will clear everything and rotate. Bringing the yoke down for center of gravity will make it rotate easier. It won't be such like a top, you know, a top heavy car or a bottom heavy car where it'll spin and flip back around. I'm trying to make that as equal as possible. And it, it reminds me of a story of uh, M Sport. M Sport did a lot with their Ford Focus rally cars, you know, the WRC cars. And 
you can see from you know generation to generation how they improved. And one of the improvements was it was when the French engineer, I think L'Oreal, came there. He actually, in one of his iterations of it, took the roll cage and lowered it beneath the uh, roof of the car. Instead of having on most rally cars, everything's you know really tight to the roof, looks nice, it's great. But what he did is he lowered it down. What did that do? It took the center of not the center line, but the center of gravity further lower. He put all the panels flat on the ground or flat on the floor pan, lowered the center of gravity. He put skid plates on the car. He lightened everything up on top of the car. And then to make minimum weight, because you have to have a minimum weight on the car, he put like 80 kilogram rear skid plate on it where the weight is needed the most. That lowered the center of gravity on the actual on the, on the uh, line of the car. Plus, if you look at the very balance, it balanced the car more. He put everything where it needed to be balanced. I mean, the guy, it was, it was pretty ingenious. You know, he's real. Actually, he is really ingenious. And that's what you get when someone thinks outside the box. Now, um, we're not thinking out too much outside the box. We're just trying to say, oh, well, it's going to look like that. Let's give it a shot. So basically, let me weld up some side plates. We'll put this on. We'll figure out exactly the height. And actually, I want to go over first, and I'll measure the uh, uh, yokes to the, to the fore and the crossbars on the rotisserie and see if we're going to run into any problems. So let's measure the sides, and we'll put it on the rotisserie. Now, what we have here, we're going to do the width of the car, the total width of the car. Now, I have that bar right there that is exactly straight up and down. I have a prop against my desk. If I sit there and go here, I look at it, and I have, if I go straight down there, 63 and a half inches. Well, I'm going to call it 64 just for sake of it. So we need 32 inches of, of swing travel on the rotisserie. So let's measure out those, and let's see what we got. Now we're at the rotisserie. As we can sit there and see that, okay, let's say we needed from the most for our top pipe is 28 inches. 28 inches on the center of this yoke gives us tons of clearance, no problem. When we go to the top, I mean to the width of the car, which is 32 inches, if I go like this, 32 inches into the center of this yoke, puts me into the center of where I'm gonna tie this thing together. So this thing that I'm going to use to tie it together is no longer useful. I gotta figure out something else. Um, I have an idea, let me go grab some stuff and I'll be right back, all right? <laughs> uh, you know what? Don't do what I do. Measure your car first. <laughs> oh, I had this all thought out. Grandiose plans. Oh, it's going to be great. You know, I got my like, safety, you know, wheels just in case it collapses and all this other stuff. And it'll, be, it'll be good to go. Well, guess what? It failed. <laughs> I got to pretty much the tube that's going to connect these two um, our rotisserie stands to make it a box, basically, is what I said. Is going to be here, so I got to take the wheels off. You know what? I screwed up. You know, hey, listen, this, it's a short video. Hopefully, <laughs> probably not, but um, this is, you know, what I have to do. What am I going to replace it with? Piece of old roll cage tubing. Found it in the scrap pile, and the reason why is you take a look. These are the tubes. I have two of these tubes that I connect them together. I had to, you know, hog out the ends for it, and no problem. Goes right through. How am I going to lock them in? Take it over the drill press, drill a couple of holes. You know, one right here, one right here, right through. Same thing on this, right through, bolt it, we're good to go. You know, and there'll be plenty of um, uh, meat in here, so it's not going to flop around. I got to put it in here. After I get these things, make sure they're all square. I'll weld them all up so they don't move, cut it, and then put a uh, bar from here up to here to support the uh, back half of it. That way, so it's not going to, you know, so it's not going to deflect and wiggle itself to break the weld or the, the adjoining steel. So let me go over to the drill press. I'm going to just go zip this out really quick and come back, and we'll take these wheels off and weld it all up.
bottom yokes, I have that pipe back in there, so they're aligned in a straight line. This is aligned in a straight line. If I tighten it up, it kind of tweaks a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it on the sides to stabilize it, then pull the, you know, clamp the bolts in, weld a little bit more, then pull them out and tap it down and weld it all in. Hopefully it'll work. On that, <laughs> we are now completely, uh, well, we finished um, fixing my screw up. So let's continue on with putting the thing on the 914. Um, it's, uh, actually, I think this is going to work out a lot better anyway. It's going to be a much more stable platform. Let me um, start putting the mounts on the 914 so we can get this on the rotisserie and test the thing out and see if it actually works so we can put it on the sport. We're now at the point where we have to mount the rotisserie yoke to the car. You know, it's going to be different for everyone. You're going to figure out which way you want to do it. This is just, you know, the way I'm looking at it going, what is, what do I have lying around? What's the easiest? I put the fingers from the end of the on here and bolted it all to it, grind them off. These are some quarter inch steel plates. I'm just going to be welding it to here, taking this off, then bracing it. Just so it, I mean, the thing is you don't want it twisting. You can get away with a relatively small plate but you just can't have it move because once it starts to move, that one will break the welds. You don't want that. So if I can box this thing in and get at the bolts with wrenches, I think I'm golden. Well, let me show you first what um, the initial thing that I want to do, which will be for every car, and trying to release some of the pressure off of the uh, rotisserie uh, stands right there. So let me show you this. Here's one thing I want you to consider. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to reduce the amount of stress that's on the rotisserie uh, collar itself. So the yoke here, I put the level on it. And what it is, it's a level across here. So I'm trying to distribute all the weight across the entire yoke. Whether or not it's going to work, I don't really know. As you can see, on an engine stand, it's primarily on the front here. I also can measure from here to the bottom of the floor. That way, you have an imaginary line going straight through the car. This will match up in the front if I have the exact measurements and make it equal up there also. Trying to reduce the amount of stress that's on the rotisserie. You know, the more I can take time now to reduce the stress, I think the better in the long run and the, and, um, the better it'll work out to be. So let me um, weld up the plates, then we can go to do the front. Before taking the bumper off, it's on the jack stands, and I don't want to raise it or lower it to have any risk of, of uh, putting this out of adjustment, you know, because it's only pretty much tapped. What I want to do is take the level again, put it here, make sure it's on the center so it's level, and measure to the bottom of the concrete, and make sure the tape measures push all the way down and straight. And what do we got? We have. 26 and an eighth inches. Write it down. That way, when I pull the bumper off, I'm going to leave everything the way it is, turn the car around, and get the other uh, bumper support, put it on here, and that'll give us a lot less measuring, and that way we can set it up, see if we have the same exact height. If we have, we're good to go. So. Let's uh, get this turned around. Let's get this off and we'll get this thing turned around. We now have to find the center of the portion. As you can take a look, we have nine body plugs right here. All of them equidistant on this side. There's four on this side, four on this side. Where it actually curves right here, there's one in the center. And now if you take a look, this hole right here for the bolt um, is it, it appears to be in the center. Just to make sure, don't want to touch the jack stands, I went from the outside of this hole to the outside of this hole and it's exactly 29 inches. Half of 20 inches, 14 and a half. You go 14 and a half, 
it's right in the center of this um, plug. If you go up, it's right there. So let's grab a level right here. And we have to, excuse me for going over there. But that is level right there, 100%. So we have to bring this over. That right there is in the middle. That right there is actually level. So I can get this up right there. Is the center of the car. Let's put the uh, crossbar on or mount or whatever you want to call it so we can get this thing figured out. Twenty-six and an eight. Two little shims had to do it. <laughs> now we are pretty much exactly in line with that bumper. The external part of, or the outside of this mount for the 914 is all welded in. We do have a little bit of a problem, which I knew the problem was there. I just didn't say when I was putting the mounts on. As you can see right here, there's a whole lot of airspace. Actually, if I sit on this side, there's a whole lot of airspace right here that we need to connect to this bar. Well, how are we going to do it? Because we need to make this a box section and to be as rugged as possible. I'm going to use this. This is an old table leg from a welding table that I had. Um, pretty much just it's a straight old angle iron just it'll just go right in there it'll bridge the gap make a tabletop that's all we're doing let me go cut it up and put this thing together and get it done so we can get this thing on the lip then we get the sport bucket <laughs> Do the one for the front you have to do the same exact thing but seeing how we use scrap bin pile metal from that i use scrap bin angle iron i use different scrap bin metal for this i gotta use different scrap bin metal angle iron this is you know the shelving that i have it's is going to work out much better it's you know i got it it'll go right here go right there cut it up it'll work i was going to use this that's a little overkill Plus, it's not long enough on the side. So let me just do this thing up, we'll, then we'll bolt it right to the uh, 914. Well, it looks like it's pretty much welded where I where it's going to give me the best shot, you know. Um, let's wait till this thing cools. We're going to bolt it on the 914, then prep the 914 to actually put on here, then get it on the lift. Hmm, you well, know, one step at a time. Oh, mounts are on, and we have to take, a pop, take off the loose body panels. The good thing with a 914 is I got my 13 millimeter socket and it should take them all off. <laughs> it's gonna be really quick. But I also have to brace the top. And for our 914 owners, um, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but I'm gonna show you what I got to do it. Uh, this is kind of my mentality on the thing. So let me pull the body panels off, then I'm gonna brace it, then I'm gonna stick it on the lift, put everything in and adjust up the uh, rotisserie. So let's see if it works. So we can get onto the sport quattro. The 
one last thing we have to do before we put it on the uh, put this on the rotisserie is we got to break this up. First thing is we have no doors, so when it compresses, but most of the strength is in the bottom sills, just like most Volkswagens. Almost everything is there for the strength. You know that's how they designed it because if you open the doors and close them, if it if the doors were actually um, assisting in the strength, guess what? You wouldn't you couldn't be able to open doors because the, the two pieces of body would fold in, it would lock the door shut. The donor car for this it's out there is a, se a 74, 70, I don't know, it's a two liter. I think it's a 74. Uh, that's out there is it's rusted so bad from the sill line down that the doors, one of them's open, won't close, the other one won't open because it's actually folded in on itself. That's why it's a uh, parts car for this. And this is, the shell is actually, for a Northeastern car, this thing is freaking, actually it came from Kentucky, I guess, uh, is what the guy told me, but uh, it's, an, it's as a shell, it's actually really good from what most I've seen. So, but what I wanna do is I wanna make sure even though the shell is pretty good and has most of the strength down there, I still don't want it to curve in because of the forces it's generated from the spinning and around and everything. It's one thing when you have suspension on either side trying to bend it, it's another thing when you have it further out and trying to bend it in. So we don't need a lot of structure, at least I don't think. This is the first time I'm putting a 914 in a rotisserie. We'll see what happens. But what I did do is I wanted to get bars that were really tough, that won't bend, and it's really good structural steel that I could put on there because you really can't use like a bed frame or something like that because I mean it's it's good metal in small short se sections or for just something for something to sit on like a, like a uh, like the part of a battery or something like that that's not a problem you know it's in the length the farther there is the more its shortcomings you know basically become apparent you know non-heat treated so forth you know stabilized but what I am going to use the first thing I was going to use was this these are Audi door bars I was gonna say, oh, these things are super stiff. They're made to take umpteen amount of G's when they hit, so forth. But it's round and it's horrible to get on there. What I did do is, you know, such a pack rat, um, I've taken apart a bunch of TDI Passats. The best thing on the Passat is the engine and transmission and possibly the front end and sunroof for a Corona. Uh, just the sunroof, I mean. But that's pretty much it. But I take it all apart and I get stuff like this. These are the door bars. And they, I mean, there's a lot of gravity here, so it's really tough. And what I want to do is stick it right there, weld it. Once it's against the sunroof frame, then it's flat and I can weld it on here. That way, forces of, you know, of just straight linear forces are basically being, how can I put, uh, counteracted by this. You know, because basically it's, it's kind of a roll cage. And it doesn't need much. You know, because this thing is actually pushing, will be pushing on here, so it doesn't need much of a weld here, and it doesn't need much of a weld here, because it's, it really, it's not going to be any shock forces, it's just going to be spinning it around, and it's not going to be for that long. The other thing is, I have three of these. See how many sots I've taken apart. I'm going to take it, flip it over, and go like this. And that's pretty much, you know, or underneath here, pretty much weld it, Weld it to there, that is a cross or a diagonal beam. Now you can see in roll cages, you know, they call it a diagonal, which basically the twisting forces are counteracted. Uh, will it work? We don't know. You know, I mean, you have to remember I'm just a hillbilly, I'm not an engineer. You know, I'm just using my best guess and just if it's logical, it's logical. So let me uh, cut this or start grinding this up and I'm just going to weld these three things in. And as you can see, I got it. And that's 40 up on the lip. That'll be it's. This, that's an experiment from down the road. I'm, I can't say anything right now, but after I'm done with, with the Subarus and the, uh, and the uh, Sport Quattros and all that stuff, one of those might be a donor for something. But I, right now I'm just trying, I picked it up really cheap, six speed manual. I'm just trying to fix everything that was wrong with it. You know, service it right now. And, as as, and all I do is just, I'm waiting for the oil to drain, get it off the lift. And uh, refill the hall decks, and <laughs> we'll be good to go. You know, throw this thing on there. And let's see if it works, if it spins. So, all right, uh, let me get on to doing this.
uh, I found another tube, so <laughs> I decided, you know what? I'll just X brace the stupid thing. So now, torsionally and longitudinally, it, it should be good. I mean, the welds are on there good enough. They're not perfect, but you know what? I'm gonna be, you know, I don't want them good enough. Be, I don't want them really, really good because I gotta cut these things off and you know make sure all the body work looks good afterwards. So let's get that S40 off the lift and I'll roll this ship box on. We have to lock these things together. And as you remember, I put this pipe in through the bolt, cut holes for the bolts. And this is what I'm gonna use. The uh, pipes that I took off, like this. This was the one that was on the, on the, uh, on the top part of the cradle. They're gonna go in like this, and a bolt's gonna go through. But I need to do something first, let me show you. The first thing we have to do on both pipes, I'm gonna keep these locking tabs for just in case, you know, but I'm not gonna need them. What I do wanna do is I wanna make a line that's roughly right here, all the way straight down. You're gonna see why here in just a second. So in order for me to do that, I put it 90 degrees there. And we now have a line. That's the line that goes all the way down. So, <laughs> I, I think it's a cool trick. Now that we have the line, I want to keep it this on top so it doesn't rub on the ground. So all I do is I take the line, bring it in here, make sure it's in the center of that bolt hole. And we'll mark it. And also, seeing how both bolt holes aren't exactly square, I'm going to mark this one A and this one B. It just, you know, one of those things. Instead of trial and error, I, I can just see where it is. Let me go to the drill press and drill these out. Here's why the line comes in kind of, you know, just to kind of make it look kind of cool. Um, the line's right here, right here, so that all the bolts will be in the same pattern, or it'll look same, so it'll look professional. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Now that that's done, um, you're probably wondering why I didn't measure the holes. It's because I want them offset. I don't want them equal. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Let me show you what we're going to use. Here we are at the point of putting the bars underneath to making this thing basically a box. You know, because you have the top yoke on there the, and the bottom yoke on the bottom or the receiver. And as you can see, this is how it's going to go. What's going to happen in order to connect these two pipes is the reason why I drilled the holes. And the reason why I drilled them, there is those holes are closer together than these. There's a reason for this stuff. See, I'm gonna use a pipe like this. This is an extremely thick, heavy duty pipe. This is not something you would use generally in automotive applications because it's, it's meant for putting fence posts up, basically. You know, or something like that. It was, I don't know, I found it in the scrap pile. <laughs> you know, do you expect anything less? All right, uh, what it is, is the pipe is gonna go in here. I have it marked. This is the mid-center pipe. It's a six-foot pipe, so it's three feet on one side, three feet on the other. And what it is, it's gonna go out like, let's say you need you know, six inches or eight inches on one side, eight inches on the other. This way you can keep it as basically equidistant in each other pipe as possible. So you're, you know, the forces are as well balanced as you can possibly make. The, the more forces are balanced, the better. Also, we have holes right here and right here. If I drill a hole here to put the bolt in, and the same thing over on that one, and I screw up by like half an inch. That way, if you had to bring it in a couple inches, and you're like, if you put a hole in there, there's a good chance it'll slip. So, we have another hole here to drill another hole. <laughs> that way, we're actually, you know, everything is compressed on that, and it's not going to move anywhere. You know, it's just, this is a, this is a mess up function, you know, the, the screw up function button. So, let me, um, I'm going to put some grease on the yolks. Put them on the 914, put it up, and we're going to set this thing up so we can make a square and put it on the ground. Give myself the best chance here. What do they say? Bigger the glob, the better the job. This is why you
you have a left. Because <laughs> you don't hurt your back or your knees. That's <laughs> so you're going to get old. <laughs> Let me go grab the pipe and we're going to we're gonna set this thing up. Being in the center of these two. Hang on, we'll just mark it right up. Now we're going to mark the sides B and A. So it's easier for me to start swapping them. Remember, you just want them snug. You don't want them to crush the tube, so it's a bit to get it back out. Well, let's lower it down. The cat is driving with fails. It might be good YouTube. <laughs> it would suck, though. <laughs> All right, that's easy. Holy premise. Now, oh, well, you're probably thinking of why didn't I pull the windscreen? It was broken. <laughs> that's why. And if anybody has any thoughts on it, think. Why did you pull the windscreen? It's going to break. Well, it's already broken. Somebody tried to pull the uh, rear view mirror off with a sledgehammer <laughs> or a screwdriver or something like that. So, all right. Oh, this is crazy. All right, this is... Wow, it moves fucking easy. Fuck, oh, fuck. Oh. All right, now, let's see. While it's still there on the lift, on the ground. <laughs> oh, all right. You know what this means? We have to roll that Sport Quattro onto this lift and get it prepared to go onto this end, this uh, um, rotisserie. So I'm happy about that. And it spins so nicely. I got the center of gravity wrong. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't really matter. You know, but the thing is, it's there. Uh, I'm gonna call the sandblaster because right now it's kind it's pretty warm out and the snow is melting in front of the uh, lift shed here That way if I can get this thing on the trailer I'm gonna bring it to the sandblaster and give him a try because like I said I want to try him out first with this one and then I'll do the sport quattro if he does a good job, you know But this makes me freaking ecstatic <laughs> So I you know, I looked at the footage and there's a ton of footage. I'm gonna leave this out right now and then um, uh, the, next, uh, the next installment will be working on the Sport Quattro, you know, because I've got to get that thing done. Plus, I was out in the junk pile today looking at stuff, drawing how, because there's a couple things I have to figure out and how to make it work. I say, like, how am I going to do this? And I saw some stuff, so I said, I think it'll work. I think it'll work. You know, typical hillbilly stuff. But the thing is, this is good. I'm going to leave it overnight to make sure it doesn't collapse itself. But... Geez, the way it spins around, there's very little stress on this top part of the yoke right here on that engine stand. And it does not look like it's moving at all. So just, I'm, I'm excited. So sorry for it being so long for just the rotisserie, but you know, hey, why not? And just remember, you can do it. I am nothing special. I'm just a hillbilly trying to 
<laughs> try to repurpose everything, you know? Um, they didn't go to waste. It, we now have another tool. So thank you very much for showing up. I really appreciate it. And uh, next time, we'll be the Squawk Quattro. All right, thank you, bye.